Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Large Camping. Over the past two years, we have lived and traveled full time in our Lance 815 truck camper. And in this video, we wanna take a moment to share our thoughts on this lifestyle and review our past year living on the road. We moved into our camper in May of 2022 and set out to travel for two years on the road. Now, over the last 12 months, we traveled 20,000 miles covering Florida to Michigan, Montana to Texas, and all of the states in between. As we've been reflecting over the past year of traveling, we wanted to take a moment to dive deeper into a more informative video based on things that have worked well for us, stuff that we would like to change over the next year of traveling, and our goals for year three. If we miss anything in the video, we would love to have a conversation in the comments below about it. And I think before we get started, let's go ahead and do a quick tour of our setup. So when you first enter our camper, you can tell it is newly renovated. We went with a white and blue theme in here just to fit our personalities a little bit more than the old wood that was in here originally. And obviously we think Barkley looks extremely cute in this camper. During those renovations, we had to fix the front top of the cab because Connor found some water damage that was pretty gross and all of the wood was rotted out. So Connor did an amazing job redoing the whole front. We're so glad we found it early on so that we were able to fix all of the issues and be able to live in this thing for the last year, having a great time exploring the majority of the country together. Lance A15 is an eight foot bed platform camper and it is 86 inches wide. So it's on the narrower side where some campers go out to 93 inches or even wider. We do take full advantage of all of the storage spaces inside the camper, shoving things in every single nook and cranny. And that way we are able to fit everything we need for full-time living. We do have 24 gallons of fresh water. We have an 11 gallon gray water tank and a 10 gallon black water tank. So not the largest tanks, but on the small size platform that we have, we are just grateful to have a full bath running water and all the amenities in this camper. That was basically why we got this camper is because I really wanted a bathroom. I think Connor did too, but if you guys do want a more in-depth tour of the inside of our camper, we do have a whole video about that. So we will link that here so you guys can check that out. But let's go outside and talk a little bit more of the specs about our entire setup, and then we'll move on to some information we've learned this past year. Our 2004 Lance Light 815 is paired with a Ram 3500 that has the 6.4 Hemi gas engine. Our total setup weighs just about 11,000 pounds and the GVWR rating on the truck is 11,400 pounds. So we are underweight and it is a perfect setup. We use a frame mounted torque lift tie down system to keep the camper secured in the bed of the truck. And over the 37,000 miles we have had this setup, our camper has never moved. That'll do it for the quick tour of our setup. And now we wanted to come in here and talk a little bit about how all of our equipment has held up over the last year and two years total of living in this full time. The Lance A15 is a three season camper, so it's not really made for winter camping and it's definitely not really made for full time living. But we haven't had too many issues with it. I've got a list here of kind of general thoughts of things that I want to go through, talking about the truck, fuel mileage, um, the quality of our camper, anything that we've had break, or whether or not we've seen any kind of deterioration over living it in the last year. Let's see what we can cover. Just some quick stats to start it off here. We filled up the truck 84 times over the past 12 months. And over that time, we have had a 11.5 average miles per gallon. Now, all those are not completely full fill-ups. We do fill it up usually around half a tank on longer travel days just because we're already stopping anyway, and we might as well just go ahead and top it off there. Overall, very happy with the MPGs that we are getting out of our Ram 3500 with the 6.4 Hemi. It's been great. I know there's a ton of back and forth on people, whether they like gas trucks, diesel trucks. It's working for us. If we were towing a big heavy trailer, I'm sure we would get a diesel, but for just hauling this relatively lightweight truck camper, it has been perfect. On the truck, we have only had one issue with it really, and that was something that was kind of self-inflicted. Whenever we had our Blue Eddy fridge behind the driver's seat of the truck, it was making the TPMS sensor and the remote controls not work. I've since moved that to the passenger side of the truck and there's been no interference. So it's all been working well for the last couple of months, which is a great fix. Glad it was free and easy. Other than that, the truck has been running great. It's got 37,000 miles on it right now. And we just put new tires on it that are winter all season rated. So other than that, it's been flawless. Knock on wood. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the camper quality here. Again, this is definitely not something that is made to be lived in full time. And you can kind of start to tell in some areas of the camper, um, the roof isn't sagging by any means, but whenever you start walking on it and stuff, things are 
creaking a little bit more than they did two years ago. And you can kind of see some of the trim pieces are starting to bubble out. So the roof's moving a little bit. I think that was actually fully replaced in 2017 based on the records that we have for this 04 camper. Just one of those things that start to deteriorate over time. We still love it. It's been great. We can still walk around on the roof. Just little things you notice. As far as the renovations in the camera that we did, everything is holding up really well. We do have some paint chips here and there from places that we have nicked, carrying things in and out of the camper. We did fix the latch up here to where now it doesn't rub on the wall anymore, which was great. I don't know why it took me so long to take it off and remount it, but it did. And there's that. The heat has been working great. It starts to have a little bit of like a whine and squeal towards the end. So I don't know if the fan bearings are starting to go out. But either way, it still gets hot. It still turns on every time we turn it on and runs all night long. So can't complain too much there. Anything else? <laughs> oh, that's kind of all I had. We don't have any upgrades to our truck suspension. We get asked that a lot in the comments about sway on the camper. And we haven't done anything. It is all stock. We have the bumper on the truck, but that just adds more weight. It doesn't help maintain the weight. If we did have a heavier camper, I think I would start with an upgraded sway bar. And then maybe the bump stops, but I've heard those ride pretty rough. So... That's a down the line issue that we don't have to be worried about right now. So we get asked another question all the time, which is, would we upgrade our truck camper anytime soon? And the answer is basically yes. We do want a slightly bigger truck camper because we want bigger tanks, two propane tanks. We also want a little bit taller of a ceiling so that Connor can fit in the bathroom better when we do want a shower. And I mean, also for me, it is pretty tight in there. And then we definitely want an air conditioner we camped in Florida back in April and we loved it, but we had to leave early because we were dying in the heat even in April. So if we have an air conditioner, it would definitely help us be less restricted on the areas we can explore in the summertime and places we can take Barkley with us. So that would be a huge win for an upgraded camper. And as well, Connor's biggest thing that he would love if possible, if we can get all of these in a new camper is aluminum framed. He wants this because we don't want to deal with rotting wood like we did in this camper and just less to worry about and longer lasting. <laughs> Can't forget the electric jacks thing here. That oh, is probably no. the number one thing that is a must on our next truck camper setup. The manual ones are just slow and they take forever to get the camper on and off. And we don't know if electric jacks would be that much better, but surely it's... I just, I, can't be worse than the manual ones. Oh, I knew I was forgetting <laughs> something. Other Dang than that. it. That probably is our number one. We always talk about it. And I was just telling Connor if we thought we would want a trailer or a truck camper. And honestly, that's a really tough debate because we only have manual jacks. So maybe when we get electric jacks, we can compare it a little bit better based off how often we take the truck camper off. Future Connor and Amelia problems, honestly in another video. Hopefully we can touch on that. <laughs> I want to touch on some of the most important upgrades that we have made to our camper setup. A little bit on the battery side of things and then just a couple things that we would love to change but we're not really sure if we want to spend the money on in this camper. So in another camper or down the line are definitely things that we're going to be upgrading. First things first is our battery setup. We actually just upgraded to the Goal Zero 6000X from the 3000X. They've been doing a huge sale right now on all of their older battery stations. And we were actually having an issue with one of the charging ports on our 3000X. So we were still under warranty. I went and talked to their customer service, which has been fantastic by the way. And they actually returned that 3000X for us, gave us the open box price, and then let us purchase the 6000X. So it made it a very small difference in price, but we got to double our battery power for this camper and the next camper to come. We already have the alternator charger set up here for the Goal Zero products, so it just made sense to stick with them. And the 6000X, although it is the older battery technology in lithium instead of lithium iron phosphate, it is a very small platform. So it fits right here underneath the fridge, same exact place that the 3000X fit, but now we have double the power. The alternator charger has been working great for us. It shows that we're supposed to be charging at 750 watts, but it really charges at like, 550 watts which is still way more than solar that we have on the roof and it usually leaves us with a full battery whenever we pull into our campground 
It's worked flawlessly. We've taken it on and off a couple times, so we've had no issues there. And it definitely has changed the way that we camp. We do keep adding appliances that draw more power in our setup, so we end up using more power, but being able to just turn the truck on and let it charge while we're driving is a huge game changer. We would love to add more solar panels on the roof. That way, whenever we're set up somewhere in a pretty spot and we're not leaving for like four or five days, we can be charging faster from the sun. But again, with the whole roof stuff on this camper, I don't want to keep adding things up there. Our 180 watt panel has been working pretty well, but in a future setup, we will definitely have a full roof of solar there. Either way, we're really excited to have the 6000X for this next year of traveling because it's just going to let us do more things, go places even farther, and that will directly relate to hopefully better videos. And related to our battery power, one of the things that is a complete must have for our lifestyle and our camper setup is our Starlink internet. It's one of those things that people talk all the time, is it worth it, is it not? Because it is pretty expensive. We pay $150 a month for the internet service and we bought our hardware used. I think we paid 400 for it mm -hmm. versus like the six or 650 that it is new. We've had it for almost a year now and honestly, we love it. It lets us go to amazing spots that don't have service and then we can not rely on having to leave the campground in order to upload videos or check on new places and new routes. It's been awesome for us. It does use a lot of power. So one thing with the bigger battery is we can run the internet longer, but we like the option of being able to turn it on and off whenever we do and don't need it. That way we can still stay focused on the area around us, but if we need it, we can get back on the internet. We would love to hear your favorite piece of gear that's in your setup. So leave those in the comments below because we're always looking for things to help make our lifestyle easier. And one of our favorite things to do is learn from other people. So let us know what your favorite piece of gear is that you carry in your setup. Oh, we're ready. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go in and do some of the questions that we get asked most often through YouTube and Instagram. Mm -hmm. So we've got a small list of them here. We'll start it off with, are we married? No. <laughs> Not yet. We do plan on getting married. We're just in no rush and we're just living. We're... <laughs> We're just not ready, honestly. We'd be fine if we had to get married tomorrow, at least I would be, but oh, yeah. the whole idea of planning a wedding right now would just be quite overwhelming. So we're just... Not yet. Hanging. <laughs> How long have we been dating? Six years. Just She's about six years crazy. in like three weeks, which is wild. So <laughs> she hasn't gotten to know with me yet. That's great. <laughs> Depends on the day. Yeah. Uh, what breed is Barkley? Um, don't really know. Originally, when we first got Barkley, the vet guessed long hair Chihuahua and miniature Pincher. But from traveling, we get a lot of Papillon, Pomeranian, long hair Dachshund. He's just a wonderful mix of them all. <laughs> but he's a rescue, so we love him even more because he's the best. And he is fully recovered from the four teeth that he had to get removed that you guys saw in the last video. That was about a month ago now, mm -hmm. and he has had no issues. He's eating hard food and treats and just loving life. Are you having kids in the camper? Uh, again, with the marriage thing, we are not having kids anytime soon, hopefully. That's kind of the plan that we've talked about. So none of that coming on the channel soon. <laughs> But someday we that. will have a family, yes. Yes. And then what is your favorite state and least favorite state? Start with least favorite. I go back to it every time. They have some of the best rest stops, but just nothing great in Kansas. We've driven through it a few times. We've been to Kansas City. And in a camper, it's just not much to do. If you love it and you have a great recommendation, we'd love to hear it. But it's probably one of our least favorite. I haven't <laughs> spent much time in Oklahoma. Um... I haven't really spent much time in Iowa either. I don't know. And I guess our favorite state, I don't know if that goes hand in hand with the one we always seem to visit the most, is probably Colorado. Or if something else, maybe... I'd say Michigan. New York? Oh. Probably some in Michigan too. There you go. Say Colorado and Michigan. Do we get two choices? Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, what annoys each other the most? Uh, me? Two things. Wind? least favorite element which is so ridiculous but <laughs> strong winds just make everything so much more difficult in a camper and it just frustrates me to no end and i don't do well in the heat uh, again with air conditioner something is a must for me it just i run really hot already so whenever it's warm and still in here i just get cranky and it's <laughs> no fun for you it's no fun for anybody my two are lights 
I am very sensitive to just any lights that are on at night or just lights in general. I'm a big dimmer girl and blackout curtains are a must for me. <laughs> and then the other one is Barkley's licking. He licks like it's his job and we love him a ton, but that is probably his biggest flaw. All day long. <laughs> and you don't like the word no. No, I don't. <laughs> um, is YouTube your only job? YouTube is our main job, but we also do rovers on the side where we go to someone's house if we just need to get out of the camper and basically sit their dog for them while they're on vacation. We love doing that. And we also have Patreon, thanks to you all, because you support us on doing what we love to do. And the other one that helps us a ton are brand deals. Your guys support by putting up with the brand deals we put on these videos mean a ton to us and it helps us continue our journey. Where are we from? Uh, I was born and raised in Northeast Dallas, lived there for most of my life, and then we went to school in Fort Worth. That's where we met. We lived in Dallas, moved to Colorado, <laughs> and been in the camper. And I'm originally from the East Coast of Florida. Do we plan on getting another dog? No. We do after a couple years when Barkley sadly passes, but he is such a good dog that we do just want to focus on him right now. And... We do want to plan on more international travel when that happens, so having no dog makes that a lot more accessible, but we'll always have a dog. Just majority of the time. Might be a bigger gap between the two. <laughs> I guess the next question that we get sometimes is, do we plan on doing international travel? I think at some point, yes, we may try to start implementing it a little bit. So if there's anything that you guys would like to see, or if it's something <laughs> that you really don't want to see, let us know so we can kind of help put those ideas into our planning. But we would like to branch out a little bit. We just don't know when or how to start that yet. <laughs> and the last one we get a lot is, will we get a camper with slides? Honestly, I don't really have any desire to. <laughs> Whenever we're in a place for a long period of time, the extra space would be nice, but a lot of them that have slides, you have to slide it out before you can get into the camper to do things, and we're in and out of here all the time while we're on the road. <laughs> Just one more thing that can go wrong, and not really worth the headache for the truck camper lifestyle. So, as of now, no. But if you have a reason to convince us to get a slide, we would also love to hear your thoughts about that. But for us, probably not. All right, that's it. That was a little rapid fire top questions that we get all the time. Hope you guys learned something. And if not, we'll keep trying. <laughs> We're just gonna stretch our legs a little bit. There is a small trail here nearby and we kind of ran out of angles to film the shots. So we're gonna go walk a little and talk a little. This was a great year of growth for us. One year ago today, we were just under 8,500 subscribers, and today we are almost gonna hit 22,000 subscribers. Hopefully it will be by the time this video is live. So a huge thank you to everybody for joining us and sticking it with us over this last 12 months and two years. We love being able to travel and video our lifestyle for you guys. And it was just definitely one of those things that we had these number goals set in our mind. So being able to hit those at the end of last year was a huge accomplishment and motivator to keep going and keep pushing ourselves to do even better things for you. So yeah, it was a very needed year and we appreciate y'all. In the last year, we posted 62 videos, 63 if you include this one you're watching right now. And our most popular video was our snow camping when we got stuck outside of Steamboat, Colorado. If you haven't watched that, honestly, Probably one of our favorite ones. It makes sense why it's performing amazing. So give that a watch. Our lowest performing video is the one that we did last year in Mackinac Island in Michigan. We had a great time filming that. Honestly, we biked around the whole island, saw something new that Connor's never been. That is our least performing video. Just thought these would be some fun stats that we've been reflecting on the last year and kind of what we can improve on and what we need to do more of to have videos perform just as good as that snow camping one. To add on to that, Connor just had a really cool comment looking at our analytics from YouTube. In the last 365 days, we've had almost 2 million views. So, thanks for watching. That honestly is insane. We're almost at 22,000 followers, which Connor was saying earlier. And to get 2 million views in the last year, that doesn't even sound like a real number. It just gives us some more motivation to keep going, doing what we love doing.
thank you guys for always watching and supporting us. Since we're talking about the whole YouTube thing, <laughs> one thing that we go back and forth on quite a bit is whether or not to incorporate shorts on our channel. Neither one of us really like that style of filming. We would much rather do the long format vlogging videos. Um, but if there is a huge demand in our audience for stuff like that, it would probably be like snippets of our longer form videos. But we don't want to switch our focus into something different than what we already have set for our weekly videos. It's our favorite way to film, our favorite way to travel, and hopefully you guys like that part too. One of the biggest things that we have learned in the last year, we learned to appreciate campgrounds. We've said this before and at the beginning we always thought staying at campgrounds didn't mean it was camping. Who really knows what exactly camping means? I don't know why it has to be only a tent sleeping on the ground. I think if you're just out in nature enjoying your time out there, anything can be considered camping. The occasional campground is extremely nice for us because we don't have to worry about anything. We don't have to worry about our batteries being full, water, bathrooms, food. Honestly, you could probably get food delivered at campgrounds. And the occasional one has a very nice hot tub in addition to all those amenities. So we have learned to appreciate going there even though you pay a little bit more. You get to do your laundry, shower, bathroom, plug in all for one cost rather than driving around trying to get all your errands done at different places. So if you always feel guilty about saying about campgrounds like we did, don't. It's so silly trying to please everybody and let people's opinion kind of dictate what you do. We found that campgrounds really help us and kind of just, again, whatever you have to do to make this lifestyle sustainable, do it. It's your life. No one needs to tell you what to do. So yes, the occasional campground includes that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go back to the sun with the camper and kind of wrap this up, give our closing thoughts. So we'll see you over there. While the wind is cooperating for a little minute, we're gonna talk about some of the goals that we have for this next year, year three, whenever we were talking about planning and filming this video. We talked a lot about this, and I think there's a couple things that we would just like to touch on. If you've been following us for a little while, we have recently been talking about how we want to slow down our traveling a bit. It has been a big change for us to slow down and stay somewhere for three or four days. I know that might not sound like a very long time for if you stay somewhere for weeks or months, but for us that is actually very slow. We used to change up our locations almost every day, if not every two days. And the reason that we've changed to three to four days at a spot is that we can take the first day for us to relax the second day to kind of film everything that we're doing and go on a hike nearby and explore the area with you guys. And then the third day just to kind of recoup or also keep filming. And the fourth day to travel or if we really love the spot, stay again and then find somewhere new. It's been perfect for us and definitely what we want to incorporate in year three. Going off of that, with the slower travel and everything, it means that the traveling that we're gonna be doing is hopefully gonna be more intentional uh, we've had some comments and we've known it too that some of our videos have gotten a little repetitive, a little on the boring side, and part of that is just the full-time lifestyle. It's the reality of it. You know, we're not always doing something crazy, but we want to incorporate more intentional travel and intentional camping into this next year of our lifestyle. We hear you guys. We've seen the comments like you just said. Thanks for being so direct. We're working on it. We promise. And going along with that, we also are looking forward to kind of changing our YouTube videos up just a little bit. We want to get more into kind of activity or challenges for ourselves a little bit more, put ourselves out of our comfort zone because we do realize our videos are seeming pretty similar to each other every week. And I know you guys probably feel the same and thank you for still watching us, but we know for us to keep this lifestyle sustainable is we need to switch it up just a little bit. 
If you have any thoughts on what you want to see us do over this next 12 months, please leave those down there. I know we're asking a lot of you guys, but we want to take your input and incorporate that into our lifestyle. So again, we're going to look at broadening our videos a little bit. And with that, that may include a new truck camper. We know that in order to do some pretty big adventures over the next <laughs> two years, we're gonna want something just slightly bigger. So we're always kind of looking and if we find the right one and we can make it work, we probably will. One of the things that we like to preach is that whenever our needs change, our setup changes a little bit, we'll see. <laughs> and going back to kind of saying how we wanna change up our YouTube videos just a little bit, that doesn't mean we're gonna stop camping or finding a new camper and doing all of that stuff with you all. We just know we need to put some more activities as well in these videos to make it more engaging interesting for us and you guys and yeah just grow as we enter into year three we're not stopping <laughs> we're not slowing down anyway nope. we're just going to be changing some things we have some really really exciting news for you guys coming in the next video we've had a couple guesses on our youtube post <laughs> so keep leaving those down below we hope you guys enjoyed a more informative and just kind of one-on-one -on -one discussion between us and our viewers with what this last year has been like what we hope to have in this next coming year and just our thoughts on this lifestyle hopefully if you are considering it you've learned something and we've been able to help we appreciate you guys so much and we couldn't do this without you so hopefully it's gonna be another great 12 months together <laughs> i was telling connor earlier and i can't believe it's only been two years i feel like it's been so much longer than that only because of all of the areas we have traveled things we have done and dealt with especially during snow camping season it is one of our favorites but it is probably one of the most challenging one for us and we don't want to stop that anytime soon but we also have some plans to change it up a bit we'll see you in the next video with a pretty big update in our life I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. I know we are really <laughs> going to enjoy it. We already have been for a little bit. And uh, yeah, we'll touch on that then. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. We appreciate all of you and everyone new here. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope you have a large day. <laughs> what do you think the surprise is going to be? <laughs>